Hello, this is my 2010 Volvo XC70 D5, which I have recently converted to a T6 engine. I've commented a few times and asked many questions on the Volvo groups on Facebook about requirements to do this project, and now that it is almost complete, I thought I'd do a quick run through of what I've done, how I got here, and just some tips and advice that I can give for others that are insane enough to try something like this by all means the way i've done it is likely not the only way that you could do a conversion like this this is just the path i took due to what was available and just some other little options that i'd like to add to the car at the time so you can see this is my my little shed it's not that spacious but i understand it'd be a lot better than what some other people would attempt to do this in i do have a hoist i have a little bit of room to move and now that the project is in almost completed stage and I've done a lot of cleaning up, there are not too many parts left over. I mean, this, this car is assembled to completion, bar a couple of things. Interior is not one of them. But you can see that I still have excess seats, diffs, rear suspension arms left over from, from the other car that I purchased, electrical, some interior parts, there's a transmission in there. Most of this is either from the D5 car, as it was originally. There's more up there as well. Or the worst of the two when I came to parting and selecting pieces. Now, the path I chose with this is my, my D5 engine broke. Failed catastrophically due to a accessory belt failure, which on the D5 engines runs a large risk of getting into your timing gear and destroying your engine completely. And that's what happened to me. And I'll put another video up about that, which I'll link as well, just to sort of the disassembly of the D5 to see the extent of the damage. In Australia, a D5 engine costs almost as much as what this car is valued as because the, the failures are so common. So the path that I took to get this car up and running again, the cheapest and most effective way possible was to do a T6 conversion. That means a full diesel removal, add everything for the petrol, the engine, electrical, and everything that follows on. And there is quite a lot to follow on. The donor car that I used was a V70 T6, which are pretty common in Australia. I think they had a, a few options of engine in Australia for the V70. Um, T6 was one of them. I believe they came in a 3.2 litre and also the D5, whereas the XC70 in this year we did not get in the T6, we only got D5, which is very common, and you'll see the occasional 3.2 litre. So, it is a bit of an oddball. Um, the XC70 P3 design, this design of car, did get the T6 in later years. I think around 2014 in Australia, we started to see the introduction of that engine. But in this year, it's just not a thing. While it is the common engine in international markets, from what I'm saying, so... I've built what everyone else takes for granted as an XC70, but unique here and unique for me. Okay, so here's the finished product as far as engine bay goes. Keen eyes will see that I have also put a, a TDI tuning box on here. Trying to get the most out of the power. I will likely go a Hilton tune later on, but I have this for now. The car I got this from already had holes drilled in the cover where this tuning box is, because the previous owner had a TDI box in here. So it almost seemed like it was worthwhile to start with that. So that's what I did. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen these engines before, which is probably Australians mostly, they're a very strange design. This is the front of the engine here. It's an inline six. It's mounted transverse, which is pretty unique to Volvo, I understand. Alternator is in there. When it runs on a shaft that comes right through to the accessory drive, which runs off the back of the engine. You'll see some other common accessories like your air conditioner in here. Underneath the back here, underneath the battery, there's also a power steering water pump that runs on a belt that runs in here. The belt is driven off a chain, which I think is the same as the cam chain that runs on the engine in there. But it's called a reed unit. It's a rear engine accessory drive. So wacky engineers doing wacky things to make it fit. But they've done it. It seems to work quite well. 
getting this engine out of the other car and into this one was quite a challenge. Obviously, Volvo intended that you would drop the whole package straight out under the floor, which makes sense, works well. Um, I didn't do that, and I didn't do it purely because of space constraints in the shed. When I pulled the engine out of the V70, I needed the car to still have uh, a front frame. I needed the car to still be on wheels, so when the time came to get it out and get the next car in, I could still roll it out of the shed. I underestimated just how wide the engine is. It's actually, with the transmission assembled, the engine sits slightly underneath the chassis rails at both ends. So trying to get it to come upwards, you need to twist it, lift it, turn it, slide it forwards. The whole works. It's quite a challenging task. It is doable. Um, I wouldn't do it again. Next time I will definitely just pop it out the bottom. I did actually put it in from the bottom in this car because once I could get this, this car into the shed, it wasn't so much of a big deal to remove the front suspension and install the engine properly. Um, another interesting thing to point out to people that aren't necessarily Volvo owners is this car has what's known as a, a fake firewall or a second firewall, which is this panel sort of here that runs across. The actual steel firewall of the car is way back under here. And in this, this cavity, you'll find your things like your ECU, your brake booster, your brake master, ABS module, all of the things that you would expect to see in this engine bay and can't. Um, all of this stuff needed to be changed from the donor car because of the options that the V70 had that my XC70 did not. This XC70 was options. I think it was considered a titanium package. I'm not sure exactly. And it originally came with your blind spot sensors, which are these. Um, it came with electric tailgate. Um, it came with the, the um, active headlights. But that's pretty much it. The V70 that I purchased also came with 4C active suspension, rain sensor, adaptive cruise control, which is that one just there, uh, lane guidance, premium sounds, keyless entry. On the path of changing things over to make this work, and again, there is probably other ways to do this, I don't know, I just did what made sense to me because I didn't want to have to do things twice. But obviously, changing the engine itself requires a different wiring limb for the engine. Um, there is also in this car what's called like a front clip wiring, which is the harness that runs around for your headlights, your horn, you know, like all your fog lights and everything underneath here. They combine together in this in this main fuse box here. If I can get that off. It's actually really, really interesting how they've done this, and I think it's a, this is one I can thank Ford for. This panel here is engine. This is spares. And this part here and underneath is the rest of the front clip. So when you do remove an engine out of here, you can actually pull this section of the fuse box out, which is harder than it sounds, but it is possible. And then lay it over the engine with the ECU. And all of the communication from the engine computer and everything, all of your sensors, runs through a large plug that's down underneath here that you can access from underneath the bar. That will separate your whole engine loop. So your engine can come out in one piece. If you also want to go to the extent of adding features like I did, partially because I wanted them, and also because when you start changing computers, you need to change all the computers in line because they're all coded together and they're all expecting to see certain things. So naturally I needed to change the engine control computer. I then needed to change the CEM, the central electronics module, because it needs to understand that it's a petrol, petrol six cylinder engine now. Um, there's likely security coding to prevent theft in between, so changing that. The CEM has expectation that things like this adaptive cruise control module exists and is powered. I didn't have one before, so I do now. Same with the parking sensors in the front, which I can, you can barely see. Parking sensor here and underneath. I didn't have those in this vehicle. I only had rear parking sensors, so again, I've had to add those in and all of the associated wiring. So once the engine was removed from the V70, the, the wiring harness from the V70 as well, the front body wiring harness was also detached from the CEM, which sits just under 
passenger side. And remember, in Australia here, so this is the passenger side. This is the driver side. The central electronic module is under there, and there's a couple of plugs that allow you to remove that front that front loom. So that was all changed as well. Um, in addition to that, I actually changed pretty much every single wire in this car. Your main body harness runs in a big loop around the car. Comes from your central electronics module, runs right down that side to another fuse panel at the back, and then loops back around and comes back up this side. So there's a full loop of wiring. I'll splice a couple of photos in here for you to, to have a look at just how I did that. But I replaced pretty much all of that. Other things that I had to change were, as I'm adding keyless entry down the path of swapping out modules and things that the computer is now expecting to see, to have keyless entry work properly, you need to install the the keyless valet antennas throughout the car, which mine didn't have, but it did have the mounting places for them. And your antennas, you know, your, antenna, your, uh, your door handles, which have the, the keyless entry button, which is why they're red at the moment. I haven't had those painted yet, but I needed to swap them over so things would work. So all of the wiring and the doors had to change, which granted I was going to do anyway, because the V7E was optioned with the Dyn Audio Premium Sound. So I've also moved the inner skins and the doors Installed all of the premium sounds, all of that stuff exists in this car now. I've never seen an XC70 in Australia that had the Dyn Audio Premium Sound. I don't believe it was an option presented to Australia in this car. I might be wrong, but I've never seen it. Whereas it seems relatively common in V70s in Australia. So I like my audio. I think the swap was worth doing. But again, I think it was built out of necessity because of the expectations that the computer would have. Um... 4C, I changed the 4C suspension across. Once again, likely out of necessity, and I know I could probably get into V-dash and disable 4C so the car doesn't look for it, but I kind of wanted to see what it was like. Never had a car with 4C active suspension, so I wanted to see what it was like. So as part of the conversion, I swapped the entire suspension from the V70 into this car, which it just bolts in. So you'll also notice that this XC70 is now sitting a little bit lower than it normally would. I'm completely fine with that. I don't ever leave sealed roads in this car. When I bought it originally, I was, which is why I chose an XC70 in the first place. I was be driving a thousand k's a week for for work, and a lot of it was unsealed roads, so the XC70 fit nicely. I now don't do that for work anymore. I drive rarely, and Having a car that's a little low, a little lower to the ground, a little more comfortable, it works quite nicely for me. Which is also why I could justify the petrol conversion, because naturally it uses more fuel than the diesel equivalent did. Um, what else can I say in here? All right, things that I still need to do. Uh, the car is 95% finished. I've probably done two and a half thousand k's on it since the engine conversion. Still polishing the edges just getting rid of a, a last couple of things that needed to be done obviously i still need to paint the handles that's the task that needs to be done but there's a few other little little gotchas the power steering is one the power steering on this car is a bitch it sits underneath the battery over here and you can see that this this pipe here runs all the way across to the reservoir here and there's a cooler running in here uh the short of it is it's a bitch to bleed i'm really struggling to get the air out of the system so the power steering is quite noisy I have used the recommended fluid in there, but I just can't seem to get the noise out of it. So I may have damaged the pump running it with air in it for so long. I don't know. I'm going to need to attempt another full bleed of that system to see if I can make it any better. So that's one of the things on my list. Uh, another thing on the list is I need to change the windscreen. Because of all the extra options and stuff that the V70 had that I didn't, I don't have provisions on this windscreen for rain sensor module which sits there or the lane guidance camera which sits in here so none of that stuff is actually installed you'll see all of the wires all of the wiring is still tucked up here just sitting here and i get a couple of errors when i start the car first being lane guidance doesn't work and emergency braking doesn't work it doesn't actually error about the rain sensor. It does in if you look in Vita, but it doesn't actually error on the um, on the screen to say it's a problem. So that's another thing that I still need to do. Um, I had to dick around with these mirrors. Both the V70 and the XC70 had blind spot sensors installed, but 
the cameras seem to be calibrated to the computer and even though I just effectively left these mirrors it wasn't happy about the change so I actually had to dissect the V70 mirrors which are a different shape but actually they fall away like this uh, more sort of a sporty looking mirror a much smaller mirror I had to dissect them remove the camera panels from the bottom and reinstall it during that I've screwed up something with the mounting on this mirror and it sits slightly proud on this side so I'll still need to pull that off and tidy up whatever I've, I've got wrong. Um, another thing on my to-do list. One of the faults this car had before is the washers on the, on the windscreen wouldn't work. And halfway through my conversion, I found out that the pipes, the plastic pipes that connect to your washer bottle under here were all broken. Which is why I wasn't getting any pressure to the jets. After I did the conversion and I'd replaced all of those pipes, I still didn't have any washer jets. And as it turned out, in my haste, I had pinned the hose that runs to the washer jets, which I can't see now, this one here. I had pinned that in the hinge, and it had crushed it. So I'm getting a little bit of washer jet now, but I effectively need to replace that hose, which, not a big deal. I can do that, I just haven't done it yet. Um, additional things to do. Oh, the seats inside the car. Again, in my haste, I assumed that the seats between the V70 and the XC70 were the same. They looked the same, so I picked the better conditioned seats out of whatever I had. I've now found that they are slightly different. And the XC70 had like a, uh, a more luxurious double stitch. Maybe it's a luxury thing, maybe it's a durability thing, I don't know. But they're different, so now I'm going to have to undo my work at picking the best of the two and put in the correct seats. I'll just show you, I'll just pan over here. This is one of the original XC70 seats. You can see it's got this double focuses, it'll be better. It's got this, this double stitch. Whereas the V70 seats don't have that. So I like the double stitch. There was nothing wrong with my XC70 seats. I just changed them because the car had traveled further. Um, the XC70 had done 400,000 Ks. The V70 had done 150,000 Ks. So Anywhere I could put in something that was effectively less traveled, I did, which wasn't always the right decision to make, and I'm paying for it now with more work. One of the other things that I did that is causing me that work, which is why I'm out here today, is I need to change the diff. I put the, the diff, the rear diff, that is, sorry. I need to change the rear diff because I put the rear diff from the V70 T6 in this car with the assumption that a, K, a diff that has less Ks would be in better condition overall. That was a mistake. The diff is not in better condition. It's actually quite bad. The, it has the carrier input bearing broken. It makes a lot of noise. The Haldex component works very well. I've tested it on dirt tracks and in sands and it works beautifully, but the diff itself is extremely noisy. After quite a lot of research, I found out that the diffs are actually all the same. So, silly me thinking that I had a unique ratio because I had a V70 T6 diff was a mistake. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop the old diff straight back in. But I'm going to change it up a little bit. The input flange is different on the XC70 and the V70. The V71 is much thinner, whereas the XC70 um, drive shaft or prop shaft sits in there. And you can see I broke it trying to get the other one out, so... I'm planning on detaching the Haldex unit, which is bolted in here, lifting that out, putting the V70 Haldex unit into this diff, and then installing this diff with new oil filter and all that good stuff. So that's going to be the job for today. So I'm going to make a separate video on that just to show the path I took. I'm also going to tidy up a couple of things, like I've broken the plug for the pump, I've broken the plug for this. These bloody stupid Volkswagen plugs are so shit. They just snap as soon as you touch them. They've obviously been heat affected over the years and they get sand in them and they just don't, they don't separate properly. I broke all four of them on both cars. So the one in the, in the car currently is held together with zip ties, which is working perfectly, but it just looks like shit and I want to fix that up. So that's the job for today. A couple of the other benefits I got from doing the swap was I had a few faults with this car. Obviously the first one was the wiper jets wouldn't work. Um, the second big one was the engine failed, but that was sort of a at-the-end failure. I also had a steering column fault. 
whereas the steering column lock module would fail and I'd have to bash it with a hammer to get the car to start. I know you can replace that with a new one, but that's money that I didn't want to spend. And the inconvenience of being without the car while a Volvo dealership does the work was not good for me at the time. So one of the benefits that I got with doing the swap was I simply swapped the whole steering column from the V70 into this car, put my old steering wheel back on because the V70 wheel is actually different to this, and um, called it a day, which worked perfectly for roughly 2,500 Ks. And now, thanks to my brilliant luck, I have the exact same fault again. So the V70 steering lock module was on its way out as well. It's nowhere near as bad as what the other one was. It's still occasional. It's only happened to me once, and it didn't take anywhere near as hard of a bash to fix it. But it's something I'm going to need to address in the future. Another comment on steering wheels. This is what's called a P3 Mark II steering wheel for an XC70. The V70 has a Mark, or had a Mark I wheel, which didn't have your aluminium trim panel. I used this wheel because I had the hopes of getting my RTI screen working again. The only option that that V70 didn't have is it didn't come with the RTI screen. And although it is terrible as far as the GPS goes, maybe in Australia, I don't know, maybe in general, it's better than nothing. And when I travel outside of my comfort zone, I like to have it open. So if I miss a turn, I know where I should fix my, fix my, my trip, which is the next best street. So I reinstalled that and I spliced all of the wiring accordingly, according for that, that screen back into the, the V70 loom, which runs all the way across the, the dash loom. It runs down, there's fiber optic connections, there's an antenna connection. It all runs down the driver side guard all the way back through and into the boot where you'll find a DVD module. Let me just open this up for a second. There's actually a, a DVD player under here, which I'm guessing has a map disc for the GPS. So I've installed all of that as it was in the XC70, which is all great, all the modules are there. However, because the ICM in the V70 was never coded for a pop-up RTI screen, the signal from the controller does not get to that screen, so the screen does not pop out. I don't know how to fix that. I don't think I'm going to be able to, so another project for the future will be probably an Arduino that will read the, um, the LIN signals from those buttons, translate it to the appropriate CAN bus signal to pop that screen, which I'll replace with a Raspberry Pi, probably an Android Auto-based machine to do that job. That's down the track. I mean, it's an inconvenience for now, but it's not the end of the world. I also had to play around with these button panels and stuff to make the steering wheel work. Because we've got, we're going to the Mark II wheel, the wiring and everything in here is all different to the Mark I wheel. So although it fits onto the steering column okay, the airbag is different, the clock spring is different, these panels are different, and I needed it for the joystick, which I don't necessarily need anymore, but I needed it at the time. It's, stay with me. Um, this panel is different to the one I had because it has adaptive cruise now. So these two buttons are different to a normal cruise control panel, which it normally has one button and it says cruise. I've taken that panel from the Mark 1 wheel and I've jammed it in here. It fits, it works, but it doesn't fit perfectly. There is a gap, which is right in my vision all the time, and it shits me. So I'm going to need to get a Mark 2 adaptive cruise control panel to put in there. The other side's fine, it's the same as it was. So you can see there's no gap on this side, it's more of a flush fit. I would love to get an R-Design Mark II XC70 or S80 wheel, which has the joystick on the back, but they are horrendously expensive, so I probably won't do that. Okay, the journey continues under the car now. Um, I should probably also mention that I'm not a mechanic by trade. I work in IT. So, while I feel that I'm quite capable on the tools, I've no doubt done things wrong from a mechanic's perspective. So, look, take my advice as you will. I'll show you what I've done. You can decide whether it was a good idea or not. I'm explaining what I've done. Look, if you feel I'm really, really off the mark, message me. Let me know what I've done wrong. Okay, one of the things that I changed underneath the car was... This stone guard, I suppose. This is the one from the V70. 
I chose to do this because of the, the air ducting in this was different to the one in the D5. Overall it was the same shape, but the air ducting was in a different position. I understand the value that these sort of things have to cooling, and considering how bloody hot a T6 engine gets, especially in this tiny little engine bay with a turbo shoved in the back, I figured it was the right thing to do to swap this in. I swap most things in, so it's a pretty common story that you're going to keep hearing. Alright, what else we got? Obviously the whole front suspension is V70 now. The XC70 front wishbones are different. The, the frame itself between an XC70 and a V70 is the same physically, but an XC70 frame, I don't think I can show it, oh yes I can. This bar here is a lower intrusion bar in the XC70 front bumper. The V70 does not have these brackets, and it does not have these provisions welded to the frame to install these brackets. If you were doing this conversion, or a similar one, like let's say an S80 V8 into an XC70, you would want to weld something like this to the frame, because the frame will need to be changed for a V8, they're different. The frame itself for a T6 or a D5 or a 3.2 is exactly the same. So I just kept the original XC70 frame and put all of the V70 suspension components on there. So you can see I've got things like, I already had these for the, adapt, the um, active headlights, but now there's four of them because the 4C uses one on every wheel. The brakes were the same. I just picked the better of the two brakes as far as life goes, which I think was a V70 ones that had been better maintained than mine. Um, painting back. V70 T6 exhaust fits straight up as expected. I mean, the floor is exactly the same. Volvo like to have no joins in this exhaust from factory. So I added a, a V-man join in here. So if I decide to change this in the future, I don't have to cut it out or drop the rear frame to get it out. That seemed like a good idea to do at the time. I've added in all of the heat shielding again from the T6 because I had it from the parts car, and it's there for a reason. The D5 had quite a bit of heat shielding, the T6 had a lot more. Hard to see in there, but it is different. And that includes the one up against the fake firewall. The T6, I, oh sorry, the D5 I had was a twin turbo one, so the heat shielding was higher, because the top turbo was higher, but it was, it was thinner, and there was less of it. So that was all changed at the same time. I would love to change this to an aftermarket downpipe, and I probably will do that sometime in the future, but you can see how far up in that turbo is and how hard it is to get to. An adventure for another day. Um, what else can I show? Ah, yes. So, because I went from a D5 to a T6, obviously the fuel system needed to change. I probably could have got away with just putting the petrol pump in the diesel tank and adapting the lines and all that jargon, but... The argument remains is, I know it was working in the car I got it from, which was a wreck by the way, I, I, I wrecked out that car because it had been damaged by a kangaroo, not because I felt like it, no. <laughs> yes, it could have been fixed, but this again was the path to the cheapest resolution. So, this is the petrol tank. I have changed all of the lines which run in here, they all clip in under there, you can see them in there. The diesel ones were bigger and a different colour, so... The diesel itself also ran a fuel cooler. So on these studs here, on a D5 car, there's a little cooler, which looks remarkably like this one right here, which sits on the return line and cools the diesel. Don't know if that's a, an XC thing or if it's a diesel thing specifically. I'm assuming it's a, it's a diesel thing. So out and not required anymore. Uh, Obviously the tanks are different. Here's my my sketchy zip tie to hold those plugs on. Works fine. They're not going to go anywhere, but it's coming out today anyway. Um, and you can see what I'm talking about with this with this flange. The V70 prop shaft sits against it instead of inside it. So I'm going to swap this Haldex and keep the shaft again because the shaft has less case. I'm assuming it's in better condition than the one I had, and I broke my other one trying to separate it this from this on the um, other diff so that's gone to scrap metal land so today we need to get this out 
You see, I did a lot of labeling to try and identify. Most of it was in vain because most of the parts were the same. Don't pick on my dodgy welds. It doesn't leak, it's fine. Uh, what else can I show you? Oh, as far as rear suspension goes, if anyone else is curious between the V70 and the XC70 suspension, there's not much different. The frame itself is the same. These arms look the same, but on a V70 they sit right at the bottom, and on an XC they sit right at the top. So those springs are actually quite a bit deeper in here. The XC aren't ones, yeah, they'll bolt up the same, but the spring sits higher. You'll also see this pivot here on a V70 goes right down and around. Focus. Focus, yes. Goes right down and around, but on an XC it's almost straight. So obviously that's to give clearance to the chassis rail on full suspension travel, whereas the XC will sit lower so it doesn't need as much. But if you were doing a suspension swap, you would swap those and those to change your height between a V70 and an XC. I think the shafts are a different length as well. I didn't measure them. I didn't check. I just used the ones that I knew would work with this setup. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You can see 4C stuff. So that's your 4C on your rear shock. Again, I think they're the same length as an XC70 shock. The part number that I found online says that they're the same. I don't know if there's like a little different top on it or something, but the same as far as I can tell. And you've got your arm in here somewhere. I'm blind. I oh, can't see it. There's a little, there we go. There's a little, little height lever for the 4C control. They only exist on the driver's side on active headlight cars and on the passenger side as well when you introduce 4C. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the view from underneath. I'm going to try and work out how to get the stiff out today and I'll do another video specifically on that task, but that's my run through. People ask me would I do it again. Um, if I was in the exact same scenario again, probably. I mean, the consideration made was this car was effectively throwaway with a dead D5 engine. It's too expensive to replace the engine. It's not going to work as intended. So putting a T6 in, in, engine in there changed the expected repair from six thousand dollars down to about two and a half so i bought the wreck for two and a half sold a bunch of stuff from it that i didn't need anymore like the tailgate and things like that that weren't required for the conversion but then had to buy some very specific things to suit this conversion in an xc so i had to buy some new parts i had to buy some new parts and some of them are just on the front like i had to buy these panels new because I didn't have the parking sensors and the V71 was different. This one I picked up second hand, but same thing goes. I didn't have those parking sensors, needed the panel and another one over here. I needed to buy a new grill because mine was not an adaptive cruise control grill, so I did not have the panel. I'll get some more photos and splice them in here as well, but the adaptive cruise control module in here was smashed as part of the accident that the V70 had. I just JB welded it back together and it seems to work. So yeah, JB, JB welded it together, it seems to work. It does freak out sometimes when cars are pulling away from me. So it just, it disables the cruise and it says that the radar's blocked. The radar's not blocked, but I think the alignment's out. I haven't had it recalibrated by Volvo and I'm hesitant to do it because if the reason it's not working is because of my repair, then I'm paying Volvo to calibrate something that's not gonna get any better. So I did actually order another one. So on mine, this ear was completely snapped off. I don't know if they'll just install. I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna align it with the spirit level the best I can and I'm gonna take it for a drive. And maybe it's better, maybe it's the same. If it's still the same, then obviously the next step is getting involved to calibrate it, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right. Thank you guys for watching my video.